This video is all about the different night vision options currently available for those of you looking to get into civilian grade night vision, but you aren't sure how much money you should spend and what some of the best options might be. And to do that, we'll check out the most popular devices at a wide range of price points. And we're going to be comparing an analog Gen 2 Plus white phosphor tube, which I picked up for about $2,600 at the beginning of this year. But since then, the prices are closer to $3,000. And I will say that there's no question that this is the best performing device of the bunch, but digital night vision is catching up and there are some very intriguing options available for much cheaper that give you a lot of the same capabilities. This is the Psyonix Opsin which represents the high end of digital night vision and the price on this unit was just reduced from $2,500 all the way down to $1,995 so it's about $1,000 cheaper than the PVS14 and finally the MVG30 which represents the high side of cheap digital night vision and it can be picked up for under $500 and for full disclosure I do sell the MVG30 on my website Good gear but I will be unbiased in this review which was requested by many of my subscribers and this video is just about showing you what current night vision options are and you can save 10% using the coupon code US10 and all of the gear was really expensive to get together for this video so if you want to help support my channel and help me make more videos like this one please use the affiliate purchase links down below which won't cost you anything and they'll just let some of the companies I work with know that I sent you to their website which really helps my channel grow we'll spend a minute to run through each one of these devices and for those of you that that aren't familiar with them this is just going to be a basic overview and we won't dive too deep into the specs and then a little later we're going to review some footage of these monoculars so you can get a better idea of how they stack up side by side this is the pvs 14 and this is an analog unit which is the traditional form of night vision and even though a new unit would be close to three thousand dollars it represents the tip of the iceberg of analog civilian night vision and being gen 2 plus it's very good but you can get slightly better performance from a gen 3 tube but you will pay quite a bit more for that and if you go deeper down the rabbit hole you can really get into some crazy cool and expensive setups. I picked this up from Steel Industries and overall it's a pretty simple device with great build quality and a built-in IR illuminator. And one thing that I really like about analog is the battery. And this device runs on a single AA battery and run times are close to 50 hours, which decimates any digital device on the market. And there are some housings that will also accept a CR123A battery as well. This is the Psyonix Opsin and this is the middle price unit coming in just below $2,000. And this has long been the best digital night vision option on the market and at $2,500 the price was tougher to justify because at that time you could pick up a PVS 14 for roughly the same price but now under $2,000 it is a much more attractive option. The option is powered by an external battery pack which limits its ability to be run as a handheld unit but it is designed to be run as a counterweight and it does function well in this capacity and you'll be able to run for about 10 to 14 hours depending on the settings. This unit relies on an advanced sensor and exposure value control to amplify low light and it doesn't have a built in IR, but it does have a very robust UI and there's no question that Psyonix has produced a very impressive digital night vision device. Finally, we've got the MVG30, which is available for right under $500. And this represents the high end of budget night vision setups, which go down to as low as about $100. But we have tested out a bunch of similar devices on the channel, like the Nightfox Prowl, the Night Operators Pro 2 Max, and the MVG10, which all fall in the two to $300 range. And you can check out some of my videos comparing these devices, but there's no question that the MVG30 significantly outperforms its competitors, especially in low light conditions with no IR lighting. So on the budget end, this is the best option for those of you looking to get into night vision and want to save some money. This device does have a built-in IR, which you can turn on and off. And for those of you that don't know, running an IR light will be invisible to the naked eye, but it will be visible to anybody else running night vision, which is something that you might want to avoid in tactical situations or airsoft, but it might not matter if you're out hiking or hunting or just want to check out your property, which is something to keep in mind. Mind. It also runs on a removable 18650 battery, but you can also connect it to a power bank, which you can run as a counterweight, which is pretty cool. But just off of an 18650, runtime will be in the three to six hour range, depending on whether or not you're running an IR light. All of these devices can be helmet mounted, and there are a variety of different options to do that for each device. And both the PVS14 and the MVG30 can be combined and run as a bino setup. And we've also explored some bino options for the MVG30 in another video, which I'll leave a link to down below. And running Binos provides a very immersive experience and I really enjoyed that setup. Let's jump into some testing footage side by side so you can really see how they compare. Tonight we've got a waxing crescent moon with 40% illumination and a bit of cloud coverage and it's about 9 p.m. at night and on the left side of the screen we've got the Gen 2 Plus PVS14 and this is being recorded using my Google Pixel smartphone and I've got the exposure turned down a little bit so the image you'd see looking through the tube directly would be a little bit brighter than what you see here but it's pretty close to what it would be like to 
look through the tube with the naked eye. On the top right, we've got the Psyonix option and EV value is set to low and the frame rate is set to 60 frames per second. And the footage we're looking at is also recorded from the device directly to a micro SD card. And it's very similar to how things would look through the eyepiece itself. On the bottom right, we've got the MEG30 and the frame rate is set to 40 frames per second and no supplemental IR lighting is being used of any kind. So we've got no IR signature. And this footage was also recorded directly to the micro SD card. And the picture you see looking through the eyepiece tends to be a little bit brighter and pick up a little more detail on low light conditions compared to what you see on recorded footage. One of the biggest differences between these devices and one comparison point where the PVS14 definitely has an advantage over the other devices is in field of view. Even though it's only 40 degrees, the circular view allows you to see much higher compared to the other two units, which is going to make it the best device to navigate with. There are also some lens mods available and you can increase the FOV from 40 degrees to 50 degrees, which is pretty cool. The option actually has a slightly wider 45 degree field of view, which does allow you to see a bit more compared to the PVS14 horizontally, which is nice for scanning your surroundings. The MVG30 also has a 40 degree field of view, so the width wise, it's pretty similar to the PVS14, but we're not able to see it as much vertically. The manufacturer also let me know that there is a wide angle lens mod on the horizon for the MVG30, which would significantly increase the field of view, and I'll hopefully have some more info on that in the next few weeks. So if you're interested, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss that update. We're gonna keep walking across the bridge, and the visibility is really good with all these devices. And when we look down off to the side in the riverbed below, we can still see quite well, even though this is a darker low area. Latency or lag is another consideration when comparing analog and digital night vision. With analog, there's no latency and everything you see is in real time. But good news is that digital is getting a lot better in this department. And with the option, it's extremely close to what you'd see in real time. And you can crank it all the way up to 90 frames per second, which is basically no lag. And it is a little bit quicker over the MVG30, which does go up to 40 frames per second, which is still very good for a digital unit at this price point. And even though it's a little slower, the lag is still barely noticeable. Most of the time, latency won't be an issue, but the quicker you need to move, the more you're gonna to start to notice the advantages of analog over digital and having a device with a faster frame rate and less latency. And this is definitely another category where the advantage does favor the PVS14. Color viewing modes is another interesting point of comparison between analog and digital. And this is one area where these digital devices do have an advantage over the analog PVS14. The tube we're looking through is a white phosphor tube, which has a light blue hue to it, but everything that we're seeing is monochromatic. The contrast is pretty good, but when everything is the same color, there might be instances where you overlook certain objects because they blend into their environment. Both of the digital monoculars have color viewing modes, and the option has a full color viewing mode, and although the colors are not exactly how they'd appear in real life, certain objects that are different colors really pop out from their surroundings, and that added color contrast might make the difference in you actually seeing something that you might have missed using analog night vision. The MVG30 has a variety of color modes, including a full color mode. And if you want to check out what that looks like, I did a video comparing the option to the MVG30, which is linked to down below. But tonight we're just checking out the white phosphor mode, which does for the most part emulate what we saw with the PVS14, but you do still see some other colors in addition to light blue. So this device will give you a little bit more contrast and you might spot something that you'd otherwise miss with an analog setup. Many digital devices also have built in zoom, which does help to extend your range a bit further, which might help you with detection and identification in certain situations. We'll take a look at these devices in one more environment, which is going to be a little bit tougher on them. And at the moment, we're inside my garage. And when we turn the lights off, you can see how dark it is in here. And there's only a very small amount of light coming through the windows, being reflected off the clouds from the moon. But other than that, there's no light in here. And we'll start off with the MVG30. And you can still make out quite a bit of detail, but the performance is not as good as it was outdoors under moonlight. But keep in mind, there is no supplemental IR lighting turn on. And if there was, it would completely light this room up. And you can see the IR light from this device well over 100 meters. Next, we've got the PVS14. And there's no question that this device is doing a better job under these conditions. And the image is a lot brighter, so you can see more. And the field of view would definitely put you in an advantage in movement and other tactical scenarios in which quick movement in close quarters is needed. Lastly, we've got the option, and it's doing a very good job keeping up with the PVS14 under these conditions. And what we're seeing here definitely resembles daylight, which is pretty cool. This wraps up the video. And if you're still here, thanks for sticking around so long, and I hope you enjoyed it. Let us know in the comments below how you guys think these devices compared. And if you've got any other recommendations for night visions that you'd like me to review, you can drop those down in the comments as well.